All right, let's kind of get to the meat of the lecture. How are you going to find the inverse algebraically? All right, so we're going to go through finding the inverse of some one-to-one -one functions. All right, the biggest thing I want you to remember from the lecture introducing inverses is that domain and range flip. All right, meaning the x's and y's flip. All right, that is the key to inverses. You understand that, you remember that, you can see that visually on a graph, then you should have absolutely no problem with exam two. All right, so let's find the inverse of these five points. All right, is the function one to one, meaning does any range value repeat? Yes. Notice here that we have both 1 and 2 x's being mapped to the y value 2. All right, so here's an example where, hey, f is not 1 to 1. All right, if I ever give you a function that is not 1 to 1 in the homework or on the exam, then there's nothing you can do. You just say the inverse does not exist here. All right, what about this one? All right, we've got here a uh, set G of four points. All right, you don't need to plot them. You just need to look to see, does any Y repeat? No, no, uh, three goes to one, zero goes to two, two goes to three, and four goes to zero. All right, just reading our coordinates. All right, so how are we gonna find the inverse? What did I tell you is the most important thing to remember, to see, and to understand? Domain and range flip x's and y's flip, all right? And so how are we going to find the inverse? Look here, the coordinates just flip. What was the y and g? Look at our first point, all right? Here is x, here's y. I wanna figure out the inverse, I flip them, all right? The one becomes my x, the three becomes my y, all right? So see how they flip. All right, same thing for our second point. The x, 0, becomes the y. The 2, which was the y, becomes the x. And you can see, as we look at the other two points, same thing, the x and y just flip their position. All right, so what's the recipe for finding the inverse? Okay, so let me walk you through the recipe for the algebra. First, switch x and y. All right, again, I told you this is the most important thing to remember out of inverses. We switch x and y. We're going to solve for y, or sometimes you'll hear me say get y by itself or isolate y. And then lastly, we're going to replace that y with the f inverse notation. All right, so the f raised to the negative one notation. All right, so first, is this function 2x plus 5 1 to 1? Sure it is. You guys, this is in the form mx plus b. This is just a line, all right? And so graphically is one way to think about this. You know that this is a line with the slope 2 and y-intercept of 5, and you should be able to think or see the line in your mind roughly and know that if you draw a horizontal line anywhere, you only touch your graph once. All right, so f is one to one. What's something else you could do? All right, you could uh, plug in a and b for x, uh, setting them equal and solving for a equals b as I did in the one to one lecture. You could graph two x plus five with your TI calculator and perform the horizontal line test that way. So you have several options. All right, but it is one to one, so now let's find the inverse. All right, first I'm in f of x notation, so I change that function notation to y. So I have y equals 2x plus 5. What is the key to inverses? Switch x and y. And so you notice I literally just switch the x and y position. I don't do anything with the 2, I don't do anything with the 5. I only switch the x and y. All right, so now that I have switched the x and y, I want to solve for y. How are we going to do that algebraically? I'm going to subtract 5. All right, again, I want to get y by itself. 
last step, divide by two, okay? And so I have y by itself, all right? Is this the last thing? Can I circle this and move on? No, remember we're solving for the inverse, and so we need to end with the inverse notation. And so I write f inverse of x equals x minus five over two. All right, this function, x minus five over two, undoes the function 2x plus 5 that we started with. All right, let's move on to another example. All right, is this function 1 to 1, x squared minus 1? All right, what are ways you can think about it? Well, we can graph it, or the easiest way is for your brain to fire, aha, it's x squared minus 1. It's even. It's symmetric to the y-axis. It is the basic parabola shifted down one unit on the y-axis. It is indeed one to, it is indeed not one to one, all right? You can see this parabola. You can see that it's symmetric to the y, all right? Here, I've graphed it for you guys, which many of you will use your TIs to graph, all right? Draw a horizontal line. What the heck happens? Yeah, you touch that parabola in more than one spot. All right, and so with the horizontal line test, we see eh, it's not one-to-one, -one. all right? So what is being one to, why is being one-to-one -one so important, okay? And so let me show you why being one-to-one -one is so important. All right, let's pretend for a second that I could invert this, this uh, x squared minus one. If I found the inverse, that's what it looks like over here on the right that I just brought up. This is switching the x and y's. But what's the problem over here, guys? Is this an inverse function? I'm hoping you're saying no. It's not even a function. That's the problem. All right, so if I take a function that is not one-to-one, -one, its inverse is not even a function. In other words, Keep in mind, we're flipping x and y, right? So if I fail the horizontal line test, I'm not one-to-one, -one, then I'm going in the inverse to fail the vertical line test. I'm not going to be a function. All right. If the equation's one-to-one, -one, let's find the inverse. And we have f of x equals x minus 2 in parentheses all cubed. All right, so this is the basic cubic function shifted two units to the right. All right, so when I say it's the basic cubic function shifted two units to the right, after last week, you should all visually see this and immediately be able to say, yes, it's one-to-one. -one. All right, remember, this is our S or our John Travolta, as, I, as I've called it. Okay, so again, here's our cubic function shifted two units to the right clearly passes the horizontal line test. All right, so since we're one-to-one, -one, let's find this inverse. All right, let's replace that f of x notation with good old y. And then what's the key to inverses, guys? Yeah, we need to switch x and y. And so I switched the x and y letters or variables, and now I gotta go about solving for y. I need to get y by itself. Some of you are going to think, hey, I think I can add two first. Eh. What's the most outside thing? When you read the English, do you not say y minus 2 all cubed, right? The cubes on the outside. So we have to undo the cube first. And how do we undo a cube power? We cube root, okay? And so when I cube root both sides, I now have the cube root of x equals y minus 2. And now I can add 2 to both sides, all right? So I have the cube root of x plus 2 equals y. We need to change our notation, all right? We don't want to leave it as y. We change it to the f inverse notation, and we have our inverse function. Again, the cube root of x plus 2 is the function that undoes x minus 2 in parentheses all cubed.